Okay, so this is another go at a video I tried or attempted to make a couple weeks ago, and that is fixing an Xbox One Elite controller with a drifting left stick. So let me show you what's going on here. Go into the trusty game controller tester here. And when we go into test mode, and we can see all the buttons working here. And the problem that I'm having is, as you can see, the right stick looks to be okay. But the left stick, particularly the up, is a problem. So you can see left, right, down, all work fine. Uh, but the up, see how slow. You can see how fast left and right and down responds. But see, sometimes it doesn't re register up at all, like that. I'm pushing up. There we go. Like down and left and right register. Anyways, uh, the video I started to make a couple of weeks ago was with another Elite controller doing the exact same thing. Uh, but I had a bit of trouble desoldering the analog stick. So what I'm going to be doing today is replacing this guy here. This is actually the new part. It costs about 5 bucks on eBay. point of this video is to show you that to fix a drifting stick. So obviously not being able to use the up direction on a, uh, an Xbox controller makes the controller virtually useless. And this is, you know, a $150 controller. So being able to fix this issue with a $5 part is a great thing. So that's what I will be showing you today. So the next step is to get this controller apart. Uh, I already have a video where I change the LED on this controller or a similar controller. And I'll link that here so you can see what you need to do to get the controller apart. But what we're going to do right now is get this system out of the way and get the system taken apart down to the main board where this analog stick lays and I'll show you the basic process of desoldering the analog stick now the reason I'm remaking this video is I had a Radio Shack desoldering iron which wasn't functioning properly for whatever reason it wasn't getting hot enough to actually remove the solder so I picked this up off of Amazon in fact I picked up three of these off of Amazon for about six bucks and they had surprisingly good reviews so we're gonna try it out today and see how this works. You basically just push this down, um, use the soldering iron. In fact, I have my soldering iron here. But the, touch the uh, soldering iron to the spot that you want to desolder, and then get this guy in close and suck the solder out of there. All right, so we'll give that a try. And again, here's a look at the actual analog piece. I know it's a little bit blurry. Uh, but you can see the trick here is there's actually 14 pins that you need to desolder three on each of these now put it here in, in text but uh, these guys measure the the up and down so I believe this would rest like this and you'd push up and down so this would register yeah the up and down and this would register the left and right so it's either this guy here that's a problem or it's something built into the stick anyways let's get this apart and get on with the actual fix now it's helpful to note here that in order to get these sticks off, we only need this top board off. We don't need to get all the way down to the bottom board. Uh, but the issue with that, of course, is that we have to actually remove our rumble motor connectors here. In some of my past controller modifying videos, we didn't need to do that, particularly when you're changing the LED on the, on the home button. So what we're going to do is desolder each of these rumble motor connectors. And you don't have to worry too much about where they go. They are actually pretty well labeled. Uh, I'll have my video to reference here as you will as well. So we're just going to desolder each of these points here. So you just touch the soldering on really quick to these solder points. And we'll make our way down. should only take a half a second for these to come off. I'm left-handed, so, so the angle can be a little bit rough at times. But Now, if anything, these can be a little bit tricky to get resoldered back on later. But taking them off is a breeze. Okay, so from this point of view, 
which is the bottom of the controller. We're going to remove these motors out just so that they're not in our way. Let me get the board off. And we keep it left and right so we remember which was which. And then this board just has a couple connectors underneath, so we just want to pull from the center there until it pops off. And now we have, now we don't have to worry about this is the bottom part with all our buttons. So this helps us a little bit. We don't have to take all this apart. And of course we have our headphone jack, which always falls out at some point. And in case I didn't mention it, we, before I took this board off here, there are two, I should have shown you this earlier, there are two T6 screws here on either side that you do need to remove. There's an additional four, actually there's an additional six that you need to take out to get this board out. So this does require taking out less Torx 6 screws or T6 screws. Okay, so if we flip this around, just like we'd flip this controller, this is the left hand analog stick and here's our right hand analog stick. Anyway, so when we flip this around, we just want to remember which one we want. We want to make sure we just solder the proper part. So this is the side that we're going to want to deal with here. Anyways, uh, so what we're going to try to do is give our solder sucker a try here. Now, a lot of the times for these through-hole components, the easier thing to do would be to heat the other side and then place this over the the, the solder that we're looking to remove. We don't really have that luxury here because you can see, particularly here, this plastic part is butted right up against the bottom of the board. So we have to try to heat the top up here. Let me get my, I do have this funky looking headset so you can see closely what's going on. But usually this solder um, sort of liquefies pretty quickly. So let's see how this goes here. Yeah, wait. So what I usually like to do, all right, we'll try, that one does seem to be going all right. So we'll try to do this without adding solder. A lot of times I'll add some leaded solder, which, which melts, has a lower melting point. It can make this a little bit easier to remove the solder, but it also adds more solder to remove. So we'll try without doing that at first and see if we have any results here. So you heat this up. Okay, that actually seemed to work pretty well. So we're gonna leave this on a little bit longer than we normally would. I'd say about, you wanna be able to see the solder melting. The problem is, of course, too, is that a lot of these are on ground planes. So they require all that much more heat. not even seeing that guy there budging. All right, so what I think I'm going to try to do is I won't add flux right now, but I will try to add just a bit of solder to these points to see if it'll help with actually removing the solder. It'll give us a little bit more to melt to. Yeah, there's a big metal casing that goes all around this analog stick, so it requires a lot of heat to get that part off. So we're not going to apply too much solder, but just enough to mix and get the uh, or get the melting temperature down a bit. Okay, let's give it a try. So we're going to try one of our larger points here. mixed results here, but it's okay. Yeah, well, I know you won't be able to see that on camera, but it does seem to be doing something. But you get the general idea. We'll try to get one more here, and then I'll do the rest off camera just to kind of speed this process up for you guys. Yeah, so we'll keep working our way around here, and we'll come back and, and show you when I think things are cleaned up pretty good.
Okay, as per usual, I had to hack this thing off. I was able to desolder some of these points, some of the smaller points with this, but for the most part, I wasn't able to get enough solder out in order to properly remove the part. So, as you saw, I had to basically saw it down using my drill master here, um, cutting this metal frame apart so that you could take it one piece at a time. But in the end, we get everything off okay. Um, I also used some of my low melt solder. The package is here somewhere. To, uh, to better get the parts off. Uh, the low melt solder is great for, let's see where, where they, uh, oh. the low melt solder is good for pieces like this with three pins, so you can basically heat them all up at the same time, and then you have, I don't know, 10 seconds or so to actually just pull the part, and it worked even better in this case because I had five pins I had to desolder all at the same time. But... I did eventually get the part off and I didn't damage any of the pads. So we should be good to go here. The new parts that come in, you probably won't be able to see the detail on this, uh, but there are two small tabs on the bottom of this. That for some reason when the new parts come in, they have those tabs. I have to cut them off in order to get this to sit flush when we, uh, when we add this back to the top of the board. But I'll do that and I'll solder it down and then get everything resoldered up. Okay, that sits pretty nice on there. So now we just gotta solder a couple of these down. Okay, to solder all this back on, what we're gonna wanna do is add some flux to all our all 14 of our solder points here yeah so we'll just tack down one point here and then the rest we can just go over all at once Yeah, getting ready to put our controller back together. So we're gonna set some of our pieces in place here, such as the headphone jack. Let's solder on, these are the rumble motors for the triggers. They are clearly labeled plus minus. Minus is always the black wire. Plus is whatever isn't the black wire. All right, it's easier to, I find it easier to resolder the rumble motors for the trigger stops, or for the triggers. And if I recall, these were soldered toward the board. Okay, we got uh, the pieces soldered back on there and cleaned up. So now we gotta finish putting this back together. Okay, time to test this bad boy out. Not exactly sure how I'm going to piece all that together. It took me a couple hours to get this whole thing done. And it was not the smoothest process. Uh, in the end, this thing is fine, but it's not great for this job. I wish I had my desoldering iron. I'll probably still have to purchase one of those to do this job in the future because I this took hours. Anyways. Start this up here. 
Honestly, I'm tired. That was uh, that was a lot of work, and it's about 2 a.m. I started this around 11. I'm actually not sure when I started, but I started before midnight, I think. Anyways, so let's uh, give this a go. Gotta make sure you guys can see most of this. So we hit both buttons. Not sure if there was a delay there or I'm just an idiot. Anyways, uh, so far, I can't see the thumbstick. I, mean, I can't see the triggers. Okay, right trigger works, left trigger works. Put the actual trigger stops in. And, interesting. Seems to be a bit of inconsistency with that. So when you don't have them enabled, obviously you can go to 100%. And when you do enable it, they don't go as far for sure, but you can still see the left goes to 61% and the right goes to 84 Anyway, that has nothing to do with the work I did, but so I gotta point that out. Okay, now in terms of the sticks, that was the non broken one, directional pad. Here we go. So, left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down. So, see if it registers every up, which I was not able to see before. Okay, success. Looks like everything is working okay. And we are good to go. So that is the drifting stick fix. Or the drifting left stick. It wouldn't matter if it was the left stick or the right stick. The repair is the same. You can see it takes a lot of effort and work to do. Honestly, I'm tired of doing it. Um, I'm only putting this on my channel just so you guys can see that it is possible to fix this issue. So for our $5 part, you can fix your $150 controller, but it does take some effort and some work. So if a couple hours of your time to fix this is worth it, I think it is, but I'm not sure that I want to do this on a regular basis for people. It's just, it's just a lot of work. But anyways, there you go. That's the, uh, that's the repair. So I need to get back on to doing my windows partitioning videos particularly the direct copy and the backup and restore method. I was hoping to have that done today, but with this particular controller fix, this basically ate up all my recording time for the day. Um, in fact, I probably could have recorded both those videos in the same time I did this one fix, but hey, look at that. We can now go up and down. Yay. Okay, so that should do it, and I'll see you guys in my next video.